Today we're talking about one of the most unlikely heroes of the new Necron Codex. Enter the Canoptic Scarab Swarms to chew through your infantry and carry away your objectives. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. In today's video we're doing another unit review and we're focusing on some of the little Canoptic horrors in the Necron army list, the Canoptic Scarab Swarm. We'll take a quick look at their datasheet, talk about any obvious rules combos and synergies, and how I think about fielding them in game. I will say straight off though, that I think that they are one of the most competitive units in the 9th edition missions, and I'd honestly be surprised to see many tournament winning Necron armies that don't include at least a few of them. In the background, these silver limbed and beetle light Necron horrors are used as the drones of the Necron tomb world, processing and reprocessing materials to create and maintain the Necron's war gear and armoury. The Scarabs have the terrifying ability to consume near any material, living or dead, natural or artificial, and convert it into a store of energy for later use. Interlopers in the catacombs of a Necron tomb world may find this out to their peril, torn apart by an endless swarm of Scarabs, only to make and reinforce the very Necrons that they might have been hunting. In battle, an overlord might send them forth alongside his forces, where they particularly excel at breaking down vehicles. Once latching on, they will, given time, bury through any armoured hull to get to the vulnerable crew beneath. So let's see what these little guardians can do in game then. So here we have the latest datasheet for Canoptet Scarab Swarms, who are of course a fast attack choice for Codex Necrons. They're 15 points each, and you can get between 3 and 9 of them in a unit. They're fairly fast with 10 inch movement, weapon skill 4 plus, strength and toughness of 3, 4 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 10, and a 6 plus save. Possibly one of their best attributes is the amount of wounds that they have for the points. There really aren't all that many units in the game that have less than 5 points per wound, and it means that very little is really all that effective in chewing through them. You're only going to need quite a lot of anti-infantry firepower, and if you're pointing heavier weapons at them, then you're kind of still winning anyway, as your opponent is still focusing very heavy guns on 15 point models, which is rarely likely to be efficient. They're pretty fast, and point for point they do have a fairly decent number of attacks as well. At strength 3, they're only usually going to be a threat to light infantry but they will do that job quite well, chewing through things like Guardsmen or Lightly Armoured Eldar with ease. To help them out in melee a bit, they do have those Feeder Mandibles, which are Strength User, AP0, Damage 1 weapons, but each time you make an unmodified roll of a 6, it automatically wounds the target. It's particularly helpful because of their low strength. This does go some way to at least making them a little bit better against heavily armoured targets, such as vehicles or Space Marines, but it still doesn't really make them all that efficient against those targets, they're still AP0, and typically big things tend to have decent armour saves, so the Scarabs won't do all that much against them, but they will stack a fair few saves. A full unit of 9 might do around 2 or 3 wounds to a toughness 7 vehicle, for example. With no AP, they really are only all that good against low save targets. In terms of special rules, they just have the standard Necron ones, Living Metal for a little bit of regeneration, Command Protocols, which could potentially be useful and we'll get on to, and reanimation protocols, though I think it's quite unlikely that you're going to get back a full base of these guys. They do have four wounds, and it makes it very unlikely that you're going to get any back, unless you lose absolutely tons of them, all from one unit's firepower. Finally, for keywords, they have the swarm keyword, so aren't infantry, which can be relevant for things like actions. They can fly though, which is really good for getting it through and around terrain, or over enemy models if they need to. And they don't have the core keyword, which means that you're not going to be able to use many of your aura buffs on them. Overall though, I'd describe the Scarabs as cheap, tough, and very fast, pretty much the ideal unit for getting into your opponent's face very quickly, distracting them while the rest of your army achieves its ends. So how can we get more out of our Scarab Swarms then? First of all, we have choices of dynasties, and I think one of the ones that stands out the most is the custom dynasty combination that's quite popular, giving them obsec and also a pre-game 6-inch move. For dominating 9th objectives right from the start of the game, if you did spend around about 400 points on 27 bases of Scarabs, move them all forward into the midfield turn 1, and then they all charge forward with Obsec, you're likely going to be gumming up some objectives for at least a good few turns. Most armies will at least take a turn or two to chew through those Scarabs, and if they do focus them down, then they're not going to be focusing on the rest of the army, which is kind of still a win for the Necron player. In objective-based missions, very fast Obsec Scarabs really are a bit of a nightmare. Another really good choice for them is the Novok Dynasty. They'll get plus one to advance and charge, so more reliably make combat, which is always great. And Novok is so helpful for those Scarab Feeder Mandibles, giving them an extra AP minus one on the charge makes them massively more efficient against things like Space Marines or anything with a three plus armor save. Novok can double dip on the close combat related dynastic codes as well, 
and also has the stratagem for extra attacks. It really can make a big unit of them a fairly decent damage dealer in their own right. I think that they're the two best ones in my opinion, though they're not exactly weak in any dynasty I think. You can get other decent bonuses such as a 6 plus invul from Nefrek, Nihilax version of Obsec, or go for some of the other custom ones, of which I think Radwreath is quite an interesting one. That's the one that gives you minus 1 to the enemy's toughness, which is pretty excellent when you're wounding things like Space Marines on fours. Moving on from that, we have Command Protocols, which can get them extra movement turn 1, or extra melee damage with the Protocol of the Hungry Boys, so you can try and coordinate with them a little bit in the various battle rounds. Though I don't think it's the end of the world if they're not going to hang around near characters, and they just go off to annoy the enemy. Talking of characters though, there are some decent buffs available. One of my favourites is the Chronomancer, who can give them a 5 plus invul save, and also reroll charges. This might be just one of the best targets for the Chronomancer's 5 plus invul buff, seeing as they only have a normal save of 6 plus, making the Scarabs just really really annoying to shift. They already start with being pretty fiendishly durable, and when they're shrugging off a third of the enemy's firepower, no matter what the AP is, it just makes them even harder to kill. Certainly a good choice if you are thinking about throwing them onto objectives turn 1, it'll make them even more of a grind to get through. If we were trying to go for more melee damage though, we could think about using the Technomancer with the Canoptic Control Nose. He can give nearby Canoptic units plus 1 to hit, which can be very relevant seeing as they only hit on 4s. If you really wanted to double down on him giving melee buffs, you could also upgrade him to take the Cryptic Arcana, the Failsafe Overcharger. That one's 30 points, and it could give you one extra attack per Canoptic base in the unit. I'd say it's not a bad buff, but I would bear in mind that those are only strength 3 attacks hitting on 4s so it is only going to add up to an extra wound or two on the target at best, versus most units. I'd consider it if I was taking multiple 9-man Scarab units, though probably not if not. You can combine Obsec Scarabs with a Psychomancer, who has powers to be able to take away enemy Obsec if they get too close to him, so you could potentially steal some objectives by having him run along with the Scarabs, make them lose their Obsec, and park the Scarabs nearby to steal the objective from under their noses. Finally, we have the Canoptic Spider, who's had good synergy with the Scarab Swarms for a really long time, and this addition is no exception. In your command phase, he'll reanimate one Canoptic Scarab Swarm from each Scarab Swarm unit within 6 inches of him, and if your opponent's a little bit foolish with their firepower and divides it a bit, you could even be bringing multiple Scarab bases back per turn. If you are running a ton of them, I strongly consider getting a Spider. They're really quite a good unit point for point at the moment, they're fairly tough, and are a pretty reasonable melee threat as well. Finally, in terms of stratagems, as they're Canoptic non-core units, they can only access certain ones, so they do have some fairly decent options. First up, for one command point, we have Self-Destruction. This one's triggered after your Scarab Swarms have fought. You get to pick one Scarab Swarm in the unit. The Swarm is destroyed, and you roll a d6. On a 2+, plus, the enemy takes d3 mortal wounds, and on a 6, they take 3 instead. I'd say this one could be a little bit niche. I generally wouldn't use it in every single combat, but in certain combats, that could be incredibly useful. Say you've been fighting an enemy character who you've taken a wound or two off, this could be a nice little way to finish them off before they get to strike, but just one command point. The stratagem I really like for them though is Enslaved to Protectors, which essentially is one command point for a heroic intervention. Scarab Swarms are a really good unit for being able to do this. They're likely to be pushing up towards the enemy, and they might be a unit that the opponent doesn't really want to charge into combat with, just for fear of getting bogged down. It means that the opponent won't be able to go within 3 inches of them unless they want their unit in combat with the Scarab Swarms, and I could certainly see in the right circumstances the Heroic Intervention move plus Pile In and Consolidate being a really useful way to get your Scarab Swarms up to an objective which they might be able to steal with Obsec. Could be a really nasty one for your opponent to fall foul of if they don't see it coming. Finally, we did mention it before, but Novok also has a stratagem for plus 1 attack, which could be quite meaningful if you are charging him with extra AP, it is going to start to get them to the point where they can threaten slightly heavier targets. Out of all the buffs, I think that the strongest dynasties are Obsec or Novok. Both Chronomancers, Technomancers and Spiders can be excellent support units, it just depends on what you want them to achieve, and both Self-Destruction and Enslaved Protectors are situationally very powerful indeed. So how would I think about running Canoptic Scarabs in-game then? First of all, in terms of unit sizes, I would think about either taking big 9 base squads if you want maximum numbers, or taking them in 5 base squads if you just want some smaller squads to harass the enemy and be a bit of a distraction. 9 bases will make the maximum use of certain buffs, like the Chronomancer's 5 plus invul, but dropping down to 5 means that you don't have as much coherency issues, they don't have to bunch up quite as much, and blast weapons won't be quite as effective against them. I think all of the buffs are quite powerful, you could either go for a really durable route with them, 
A big squad of nine with Obsec, a pre-game move, and a Chronomancer's 5 plus invul save is going to be enormously hard to shift, and if you wanted to get every iota of damage output out of them, then running them in Novok with a Technomancer with a control node and a failsafe overcharger, and using the Novok stratagem will get you a pretty impressive 6 attacks per base, hitting on 3s and AP-1. That little combo will do some pretty decent damage to Space Marines or Gravis armor, and even take around about 7 wounds off a vehicle on a big max size squad. It's not the most enormous damage output ever, but it's really not bad for the little guys who are supposed to be holding the objectives. In game, with fast movement, decent durability and fly, they're excellent nuisance units. They can block units, tie up units that want to be shooting at something else, or deal decent damage against light infantry. You can potentially make them very hard to shoot at due to their very low base height. You might be able to hide them on top floors of ruins and make it pretty much impossible for your opponent to shoot them. They could very easily hide out of line of sight behind a parapet or something. And when they do get into melee, a decent sized squad of 9 of them could be a really good choice for getting maximum use out of the fight phase. They could wrap and trap enemy models to stop them falling back or force them to pay command points to do so. And I would really be looking to maximise the most out of the pile-ins and consolidates where gaining a few extra inches of movement could be really decent for getting on objectives or just tying up or move blocking even more targets. Overall, I'm really positive about these little guys. I think the Conoptet Scarabs are one of the strongest Necron units in 9th. They're just really useful being fast and durable units. They really play well with the 9th edition missions and can even be decent damage dealers against their preferred targets. So let me know if there's any tricks or tips that I've missed regarding Conoptet Scarabs or just if you've had any chance to play with or against them in 9th edition 40k. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics. We'll certainly be keeping the Necron videos coming into the new year, so feel free to subscribe or check back later if you'd like to see more. Finally, if you are enjoying all the videos, I would just like to mention that the channel has a Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, such as being able to see certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the channel's prize giveaway with a chance to win some really big model kits. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support the channel, then the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.